everyone. Thanks for joining us on Nigeria Votes today. My name is Vivian Oguche. So the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it will conduct supplementary elections in all areas where elections did not take place and where returns could not be made during the just-concluded presidential and National Assembly polls held on the 23rd of February, alongside the governorship and state houses of assembly elections. So how does this work? Are we set for a smooth ride or not? These are questions that we shall seek answers to on the show today as we take a look at INEX preparedness for the March 9 polls. But first, a quick look at the latest news in the forthcoming elections. Let's begin from Abuja where President Mahmoud Buhari met with security chiefs. The Minister of Defense, Mansour Dan Ali, led the security chiefs to the meeting which held behind closed doors at the presidential villa on Tuesday, as State House correspondent Kendi Amodu reports. The second leg of the 2019 general elections takes place on Saturday, and the president is meeting with his security chiefs to map out strategies to ensure a safe environment for the polls to hold. As it did two weeks ago, the security community is talking tough and promising to deal decisively with those who intend to disrupt the vote. But on the 23rd of February, such warnings were ignored by electoral offenders, resulting in several incidents where ballot boxes were destroyed, voters disenfranchised, some citizens and some law enforcement agents grievously injured, while in some unfortunate cases, there was loss of life. The Inspector General of Police says such flashpoints have been identified and security scaled up to prevent a recurrence. We're taking notice of the fact that uh, the people there are ready to be violent. So we have increased the number of personnel, security personnel that have posted that we've increased the number and we've increased the, our uh, intelligent outfit that have been posted there so as to help us identify those uh, people that are trying to cause problems so that we take them out of the environment before they cause the problem. So there's an increase in security personnel. But what happens to those who blatantly broke the law while law enforcement agents looked on? The Inspector General of Police says some arrests have been made and investigations are in progress. Yeah, the, the investigation is ongoing. There's an investigative team that has been set up, headed by a commissioner of police in charge of Lega. Uh, they are compiling the case files, investig they are investigating them. At the end of the investigation, the police, will, in liaison with ANEC, will prosecute them. Many Nigerians are apprehensive about the ability of security agents to maintain the peace going by what happened on February the 23rd. The stakes are higher on Saturday because the stage moves to the states. It remains to be seen if security agents will step up to the plate and ensure peaceful, free and fair elections. In the southeast, constituents of Oswalu Oru East Federal Constituency have expressed absolute dissatisfaction in INEC for declaring the People's Democratic Party's candidate, Jerry Alagoso, winner. They claim that the Commission ought to have conducted a rerun election following the cancellation of 11 polling units in all local government. Our petition to you to address the injustice or to address the rumor we are hearing in Olo, Oso, and Oru East Federal Constituency. A result that was declared inconclusive in the full glare of every world. We retired home only to be told that somebody has been returned winner. After all said and done, after they bring result of Oso, Oru East, and the Olo, they cancel about 11 boots in Olo. And that is that 11 boots is about 7,000 votes. While the PDP man is uh, 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 going with the, uh, around 1,200 people in Okigwe, and Okigwe still hold. So why Oru is Olu and the Osu is declared somebody winning without the rerun? No, it's unfair. The, the boost that they cancelled are from Olu local government, and it's from Olu local government. And that vote has no less than 7,000 votes, and I know that he will make it. Hence, it's from all local government. He will clear the vote. The, the, the. It's wrong as it's wrong. Please, it's not there yet for you to rethink it 
If you want us to come on the field again to do it, we can do it. If you want to start all over again, we can do it all over again. But I think it's unfair to declare him somebody as a winner after a conclusive decision. The APC candidate describes the declaration as an attempt to deprive him of his mandate. Okay, that'll be all for now. We'll be right back after the show break. Stay with us. 2019 elections are here. Vote, don't fight. It is your civic responsibility. Do not sell your votes. Do not go to the cubicle with your phone. If you do not have a PVC, you have no business at the booth. Remember, you can use any finger to vote. Election day is not campaign day. Every vote counts. Welcome back. So the second round of Nigeria's general election is around the corner. In fact, it's about three days away. We will be finding out from the electoral umpire how prepared they are for the polls. And so without further ado, we welcome Chingwe Obuka, INX Assistant Director of Publicity. She's joining us live from Abuja. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting yeah, me. Yes, so I can see on your forehead the symbol of the cross. The symbol, are, are we celebrating something? Are we celebrating something? Ah, yeah. Um, in the whole Christian dom, we know that today is uh, Ash Wednesday. That's the beginning of a 40 day fasting. It's a lengthy period which we are starting today. So, yeah. as a good Catholic, you are expected to attend Mass and uh, be decorated, if you can call it, with ashes on your forehead. And that is just to remind us that uh, we are all coming from the dust and, and unto dust we shall return. So that is why. Thank you. Thank you. So let's get down to business. INEC intends to conduct supplementary elections in all areas where elections did not take place and where returns could not be made during the just concluded presidential and national assembly polls. Same day that the governorship and state houses of assembly elections are built to take place, how do you intend to go about this so that everything goes on smoothly? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, by Saturday, March 9th, the governorship election and the state house of, houses of assembly elections will be taking place in 29 states, because there are some states where we are not conducting uh, governorship elections because uh, the tenures of uh, the current governors have not uh, expired. And then we also know that there are some states where senatorial elections and the uh, House, House of Assembly election that took place on 23rd of February, there were some elections that were not conclusive and uh, the commission is, is going to conduct such elections on Saturday, along with governorship election. These elections will run simultaneously, that's what you're saying? Let me. Okay, Sorry, so I was asking well. if these elections will run simultaneously. I guess that's, you, that's what you just said. But seeing as the last elections recorded a number of challenges, including delays in the commencement of elections in a number of polling units, which necessitated the extension of the closing of polls in the affected areas, what have you done to prevent a reoccurrence? Yeah, um, well, immediately after that election, of course, we, will, we planned... And along the line, there may be some challenges as a human error. But those opening of pools, there are some places pools did not open at 8 a.m. as supposed to be. But what the commission did was to allow 
for extension of time. The number of times that we are lost in opening of polls and the extended the voting in those polling units. And immediately after election, the commission met to look at some of these challenges and the areas we had difficulties, especially in logistics. And all those, all those arrangements have been made to ensure that uh, materials get to polling units on time and the officials get to polling units on time so that by 8 o'clock, polls will open. And the challenges we had with transportation as well, we have reviewed our meeting with the uh, National Union of Road Transport Workers, and they have assured that uh, whatever challenges we had uh, last Saturday will be corrected. And they've given us the assurance that they will be there on time for trans transportation of materials and other election uh, officials as well. So we are hopeful that by Saturday, those challenges we experienced will be addressed properly. Okay. So there were a number of cancellations in certain areas due to violence. Juxtapose that to calls from some quarters that uh, the elections should not be uh, militarized. Uh, what do you do? How do you handle that kind of a situation? Well, this is a, ch uh, this is a security issue and it's been handled by security agencies. There's the meetings where the commission had with the security agencies, they've assured us, especially the police, that uh, they're going to provide uh, adequate security, not to militarize the polling unit, but to ensure that people who come out to vote, that nobody molests them, nobody harasses them. They come out, exercise their, their, their right of voting, and then they are, they are, they, there's going to be ensured peaceful uh, uh, election, not militarizing election in terms as if there is war but it's just to provide security for the materials and for electoral officials and voters as well. All right, so in a meeting you had not too long ago, you assessed the role of security agencies in the elections. While you acknowledged their professionalism, INEC also pointed out that it had serious concerns about the conduct of some security operatives in some areas. If INEC is concerned, how can you then reassure the electorate? Well, the only assurance, reassurance we are giving to electorate is that elections on Saturday will be conducted without any form of uh, problems coming from our side. Like I said, security is the job of uh, security agencies. They are the ones that have given us the of the electorate and the electoral environment. They are going to take care of it. And they, that reassurance is supposed to come from them. They have assured us and assured Nigerians, IG did assure that uh, his men are going to secure the electoral environment. And I'm sure that, I'm taking them by their words, I'm sure that uh, they are going to secure the environment for there to be peaceful election. Uh, so there's also the matter of um, disruptions and deliberate non-compliance with the use of smart card readers. Uh, how do you intend to handle this? And let's not forget the issue of card readers malfunctioning. Uh, well, and the issue of card reader has been a, a recurring issue. Now, we have to use smart card reader for accreditation of uh, voters. And it is compulsory. In fact, it is mandatory for the use of smart card reader. Is even if you may if you may know that it is an offense. No use of smart card reader is an offense on the part of, of official of INEC, which is likely to attract some prosecution or some sanctions. Because in accordance with the electoral laws and the electoral uh, regulations, we are supposed to use smart card reader for accreditation of voters. It is compulsory, it is mandatory. Okay. If you may, please, uh, can you walk us through some of the guidelines for Saturday's elections? I didn't get you. Uh, I was saying so that, can you walk us through some of the guidelines for Saturday's elections? It's part of the guidelines for the election. Yes, it is part of the guidelines for the conduct of election. And the elect electoral officials, we are briefed, we, are, we train them on the guidelines, we gave them the guidelines, and we expected 
expect we expect them to follow the guidelines given the, given to them for the conduct of elections my question originally was that can you walk us through some of the guidelines for Saturday's elections what are those things that the, the electorates are expected to do as they go to the polls on Saturday INEX guidelines huh? I'm sorry please can you speak up I'm not hearing you very well okay this is what I'm trying to say you have guidelines right electoral guidelines for the electorate to comply with during the polls can you walk us through some of those guidelines, some of those things a voter should do when they go to vote on Saturday? This is coming from, I can't hear you very well. I think they need to tune up the volume of uh, the, 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 I can't okay. hear you well. Why don't I ask you another question, right? Is INEC really, really prepared for the elections on Saturday? Um, I think we are having issues, uh, technical issues. We'll try to reconnect to Chingwe in Abuja. And when we do that, we'll get back to her. In the meantime, let's just take a short break. We'll be right back. 2019 elections are here. Vote, don't fight. It is your civic responsibility. Do not sell your votes. Do not go to the cubicle with your phone. If you do not have a PVC, you have no business at the booth. Remember, you can use any finger to vote. Election day is not campaign day. Every vote counts. You're welcome back. I guess Ching Wei is ready for us. Uh, Ching Wei, I'm so glad I can uh, I talk to you again. If you can hear me, I was asking about the guidelines, electoral guidelines. What are those things that elect the electorate should do as they head to the polls on Saturday? Okay, I guess uh, Ching Wei can't hear me we will continue to do what we can uh to hook up to to chain uh in abuja in the meantime the elections are just a few days away it's saturday we are talking about it's barely three days away and uh, we will continue uh to engage the electoral umpire to see uh how things can be made very easy for the electorate as well as every party that is involved in the whole process. So let me see if I can get to you, Chingwe, once again. Chingwe, can you hear me? All right, you're back. Uh, thank you for being patient with us. So I was asking that what are those guidelines that the electorate should abide by on Saturday? Oh, thank you very much. Sorry for the loss in transmission of sound. Yes, Saturday election is just like other elections. The same procedure we are going to use. We are adopting the same procedure we adopted during the presidential election. In the sense that if you get to the polling unit, our polling officials are supposed to be at the polling unit by 7 o'clock, later at 7.30, so as to set up the polling unit and open polls at 8 o'clock. And they have been advised to ensure that polls open at 8 o'clock. There you have our electoral officials uh, ass uh, assistant polling officials, uh, presiding officers, polling officials. As you get into the polling unit, first of all, check that you are in the right polling unit. They are supposed to post the list of 
registered voters in that polling unit. You go to the wall, check your, pol your, your number, ensure that your name is there, that you are in the right polling unit. Then after that, you now take to, you meet uh, Assistant President Officer 3, AOP 3, who will now check your, 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 uh, card, your PVC, because you have to go with your, your, with your permanent voter card, because without it, you are not going to cast your vote. So you check that you are in the right PU, then he will now transfer you to a next official who will now uh, do the accreditation. Check your, your card reader, your, check your PVC using the smart card reader. When that is confirmed and authenticated, then the next official, uh, AOP, APO1, will then issue you with the ballot paper. You go to the cubicle because it is a private uh, affair. You are going to do it privately. You enter the cubicle, fill in whoever you want to be your governor or whoever you want to be your uh, House of Assembly member. You register that, fill that thumbprint, and then go in and drop your ballot secretly. And again, there are still this regulation that you should not enter the polling cubicle with your, your phone or your smartphone or, uh, or anything that can help, that can use. And I guess Chingwe is gone. I was going to ask her one more question if INEC was really, really prepared for the elections on Saturday, but uh, I probably will get to see if she would answer that question. Oh, Chingwe is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. Finally, on a final Thank note, Chingwe, is INEC really, really, really prepared for the elections on Saturday? Yeah, INEC is willing and ready for Saturday's pool. In fact, by today, most of our staff are already going to their, their respective uh, states where they're going to carry out their assignment. Okay, I apologize for uh, the loss in signals. I mean, you, you can't tell these things, they happen, right? But thank you so much, that'll be all. I have been speaking uh, with uh, INEC's Assistant Director of Publicity, uh, Chingwe Obuka. Ah, she was talking to us live from Abuja, and that is our show for you today. Do join me again same time tomorrow for another exciting edition of the show. Until then, take care of you. I have been your host, Vivian Oguche. <laughs>